Dan Reberg with strumhum.com. This is live lesson number three for beginning classical guitar and a little bit of beginning popular technique. Uh, in this lesson we do a lot of exercises that are meant to be played along with. So if you've got your guitar, get your guitar up, play along, ask questions. You can text in questions uh, or uh, I mean, chat in questions uh, if you have anything you don't understand about what I say. Uh, we'll be working out of the Parkening book, lesson two, notes on the second string, page 30. We'll review a little bit of what we've done earlier in the Parkening book, and we'll review our technique, uh, both left hand and right hand, and then we'll learn a little one string rock song at the end. So let's review sitting position. Left foot is raised up, guitar on the left leg, body of the guitar dropped down, arm over the top, fingers are all on the first string to get knuckles more or less parallel, a nice soft arch to the wrist, arms coming over the top, not around the side. Uh, the whole reason for the sitting position is to get good hand position for both the left hand and the right hand. So, our first exercise is the circle pattern. From this starting hand position, we spread them out, thumb on four, index three, middle two, ring finger one, and we play thumb, index, middle, ring, back to middle, back to index, and we start over with the thumb. Up, and down. thumb to the fifth string. Five, we don't move the fingers. Three, two, one, two, three, five. Then we move the thumb down to the sixth string. Don't move the fingers. We try and keep the uh, hand position the same no matter where that thumb is playing a bass note. So don't go fast. Go slow. Be more, more worried about hand position than trying to go fast. If you go fast, the hand position is going to go away. Later on, you can worry about speed. That's our circle pattern, arpeggio. Then we did the block chord from exactly the same position, emphasizing that the thumb is out of the way of the index finger. You don't want those two running into each other. Get your wrist arched enough that the fingers can come up on the top three strings without having to pull away from the top of the guitar. Thumb is plucking down, fingers are plucking up. And we move the thumb to the fifth string. Move the thumb to the sixth. That's, those are our two review techniques, circle pattern, block chord. New technique for the day, also for the right hand. Keep your fingers planted, index on three, middle on two, ring finger on one. Put your thumb over on the sixth string. Thumb plays sixth string rest stroke, fifth string rest stroke, fourth string free stroke. Fingers are still planted. They peel off one at a time from a planted position. Rest stroke again is where the thumb plays, just falls off the sixth string onto the fifth. Plays rest stroke on the fifth, falls off five, goes to four. Free stroke on the fourth, you're not touching the adjacent string. Free stroke on the other fingers. Again, thumb rest on six, thumb rest on fifth. Rest of it's free stroke. Free stroke four, free stroke three, free stroke two, free stroke one. Eventually, this speeds up. It becomes a controlled strum. It's the same as doing this, but you just have a little bit more control. Your hand position hasn't changed. When you strum, your hand is way out of position. When you do a roll, it's right there. 
ready to do whatever else you needed to do. All right, again, don't worry about going fast. Keep slow, keep a good hand position. Don't let that thumb and index finger run into each other. Okay, left hand. Left hand, we've done the chromatic scale all the way up the neck with shifts. Fingers are curved on their tips, right next to the fret. Thumb stays behind the neck. Doesn't come over the top. Then we added index and middle, alternating rest stroke. Strict alternation with the right hand. Trying to get this habit. Again, this is for speed in the future. Don't go fast now. Just get the habit established. Get the muscle memory. Thumb. Plant it on that sixth string when you're doing this rest row. Now let's do that together. We're going to do four plucks per fret with our chromatic scale. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret. Keep those fingers curved. Shift, fifth fret, six, seven, eight, shift. Reverse our direction. Now we're going to make up rhythm so that we're still filling up four beats. One, two, three, four. But now you can go faster if you want to. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So make up any rhythm you want. If you're bored with just plucking it four times, if you're a total beginner, I would probably keep doing it four times. So here we're going to go back down the neck, starting at the 12th fret. One, two, three, four, eleven. Ten. Nine. Shift to the pinky finger at eight. Eight. Three. Four. Nine, seven. Six. Five. Shift to the pinky finger at four. Four. Now, when you're shifting, make sure, especially the pinky finger, stays curved. Don't do this. Don't get the fingers straightened out. That's why I don't like you to leave your fingers down as you're doing this. Go ahead and put down one finger at a time. Later on, you can put them all down. Okay. Second string, one more chromatic scale. This time on the second string, we're going to do a set repetitive rhythm. We're going to pick a rhythm, the old shave and a haircut rhythm, and we're going to go da 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 then second fret. This is going to help get independence between the two hands. So the right hand can do a set rhythm no matter what fingers being pushed down with the left hand. Here we go. First fret, shave and haircut. Ready, go. Second. Third. take the time to do every string, but I really recommend doing every string chromatically, watching the left hand position, making it not boring by changing your rhythm. Improvise in your practicing to make it not boring. It's always possible to make your practicing interesting. Okay, now turn to your page 30 in the Parkening book, volume 1, and we're going to learn three new notes today. We'll review the old notes after we do the new stuff. So the new notes are B, C, and D. B is second string open, 
If you look at your book, it's on the middle line of the staff. C, second string, first fret. It's on the next to the stop, top space. D, second string, third fret, next to the top line. Now, as always, play those three notes. Get the left hand muscle memory locked in. Any way you want to play. Improvise around. Make it interesting. Anything you want to do with those three notes. Do that until you don't have to look at your left hand. You can feel that they're in the right place. You can hear that they're in the right place. Alright? Now, in study 13, we've got 4-4 uh, four, four time. Remember that C, that's just an abbreviation for 4-4 four, four time. That means four beats are in each measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. We've got quarter notes in this song. At the very end, we've got a half note. The quarter notes are filled in with a stem. The half note, hollow with a stem. Quarter notes get one beat, half note gets two. At the very end of the line there, you've got a repeat sign. That repeat sign means go back to the beginning. So we're going to play this through two times. Try and alternate with index and middle. That's why we do that in our technique exercise. We're trying to alternate as much as possible. It's not an absolute necessity, but we're trying to establish that alternation habit. So here we go. Study number 13, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Open B, two quarter notes. C, first fret. D, third fret. C, first fret. Now one each, B, C, repeat it. B, B, C, C, D, D, C, C, B, C, D, C, B, D, B. Now, remember last week we talked about how singing what you play is super, super helpful. So we're going to sing it this time. You don't have to sing loud, but you need to try and match that pitch with your vocal cords. That's going to put it in your head ten times faster than if you just play it. Okay, here we go. We're going to sing Study 13 while we play now. Sing the letter name. Sing that B in any octave you want to. It can be here. B. It can be here. B. It can be up here. Any octave. Doesn't matter. All right, here we go. Singing and playing 13. Ready. Play. Study 14, same three notes, B, C, and D. Mixes up the melody a little, has a little bit of half note, a little bit of quarter note. Uh, we should be able to play it. If you got through 13, you should be able to do 14 just fine. Let's give it a whirl. Ready, go. B, 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 C, first fret. D, third, open, half note D, hold it. C. C, D, C, open B, hold it, half note, D, half note, next measure, B, 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 first fret, C, D, open B, D, hold it, C, C, D, C, half note B, hold it, and half note B, over. Good. Now we're going to sing it. Slow down a little bit, and if you can't get to the point where you can sing it uh, with me in the live lesson, practice this until you can. Here we go. Study 14 again, singing and playing. Ready and go. D, next measure, B, 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 C, D, B, D, hold it, 
hold it. C, C, D, C, B, two beats, B, two beats. Good. If you have any questions on those two, make sure you chat them in and we'll answer them at the end of the lesson. Waltz in A minor. Last thing we're going to do out of the parking book today. This is quite a bit harder than the other study 12 we did last week. Uh, this is the piece in the parking book. They usually give you a couple of drill exercises that just use the first the, the three new, the three new notes. Then they give you a piece that combines the notes you're learning this week with the notes you've already learned. And they also try and make it a classical technique where we've got thumb playing bass, fingers playing melody. And that's the way this is. This is nine different notes you've got to learn. And that's hard. If you're a total beginner, you're not going to sight read straight through this. There's no way. So what you do, you take each measure and you learn the muscle memory, the ear memory, the mental memory for each measure. Then you try and string it together. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go to each different measure. There's about nine different measures in this. And we're going to drill that measure until the muscle memory gets soaked in. So first measure, three, four time. The melody is a C, second string, first fret. That's one of our new notes. Beats two and three are both A's in the bass. Fifth string, open. So it's going to be C, A, A, like that. Now we're going to do cycle practice, meaning we're going to repeat that measure over and over again until you've got the muscle memory to it, you've got the ear memory to it, you've got the notes in your head. Um, so we're going to repeat it about five times. Obviously you do that more on your own if you can't get it uh, in the memory fast enough with the live lesson. All right, here's measure number one. Ready, go. C, A in the bass. Do it again. Doesn't matter which finger you use, you can use index or middle. Just make sure you're using a finger on the melody, thumb on the bass. You can do either rest stroke or free stroke. I'm doing rest stroke on the melody, free stroke with the thumb on the bass. Good. Second measure, beat one, melody note, note from last week, E, first string open, also followed by A's in the bass. Ready, go. E, A, A, E, A, A, E, A, A. This is an easy one, it's just open strings. But you still have to get the muscle memory for it. Good. Third measure. Second string, third fret, D, with the third finger. It's one of our notes from today. Now the bass has changed. Sixth string in the bass. Ready, go. D, E, E, D, E, E. Any more advanced players, try and sing this as we do all these repetitions. Next measure, fourth measure on that first line, B, second string open, and still has E in the bass. Ready, go. B, E, E, B, E, E, B, E, 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 B, E, 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 B, E, E, E. Good. When we have a repetition of a measure that we've already done, we're going to skip it. That's what's next. The fifth measure is a D. We've already done that one. Last measure of the first line, F. First string, first fret. Followed by E in the bass. Let's do that one. Ready, go. F, E, E, F, E, E. First string, first fret. Open E. Make sure you're using good left hand technique. Second line, E with A in the bass, we've already done it. Second measure, it's just A's in the bass, we're not going to cycle practice that. 
Third measure, same as the first. We've already done it. Fourth measure, new measure, G, first string, third fret, followed by A in the bass. Ready, repeat. G, A, A, 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 G, A. Good. Next measure, another new one, F, first string, first fret, new bass note, D, fourth string open in the bass. Ready, go. F. D, D, F, D, D, F, D, D, F, D, D, F, D, D. Good. Third line. Another new measure. D, one of our new notes from today, second string, third fret, and D in the bass. Fourth string open in the bass. Ready, go. D, D, D. Second string, third fret, open fourth. Make sure you're using your thumb on that bass note. Don't let your fingers go over and cheat. Don't let your thumb play the melody. Third line, second measure, B and low E, we've already done. Third measure, D and low E, we've already done. Fourth measure, C and low A, we've already done. And then the last measure is a dotted half note A. We just hit it once, let it ring for three beats. Now, that's cycle practicing each measure. Now, we're not going to take the time to do this, but the next step probably for you total beginners would be to try and string two measures together at a time. First and second measure, back and forth. Then second and third measure, back and forth. If you can do that, you can play the whole thing. We're going to go ahead and try and play the whole thing now. Uh, total beginners, you're going to need a little more drill on it. Uh, advanced players, you might be able to get through it with me. Here we go. We're going to take it nice and slow. One, two, three. C, A in the bass. Open E, A in the bass. D, second string, third fret, E in the bass. Open B. E in the bass. D again, second string, third fret, low E. F, first string, first fret, low E. Next line, open E, A in the bass. Next measure, just A's in the bass. Open E, third fret, G. F, first string, first fret, new bass loop, D in the bass. Last line, D. Open B, 6th string, D, 2nd string, 3rd fret, and just like the beginning, C, A in the bass, and A, 2, 3, A. Ah. Now I'm going to play it one more time without saying anything, so you can listen to it without chatter going on. 1, 2, 3. Good. So your goal with these pieces is always, can I play them at a steady tempo? If you were at my class at Tarrant County College, you would have to perform this piece for me at a steady tempo. It wouldn't have to be fast. It just needed to be steady. And that's your goal with all these. Can you play it at a steady tempo? This is not, you know, the most interesting music in the world. It's good. But 
obviously it's just there to help you learn these notes and help you learn some classical technique. The fun stuff is coming up. So you want to get through this first part of the book as quickly as possible, but not so fast that you're not doing these at a steady speed. So make sure you can play them at a steady tempo, then move on. All right. Um, at page 31, we won't be going over in any of our classes, uh, but I highly recommend you practicing those just to get your sight reading really, really going on. Uh, take the same approach. Can I play it at a steady speed? Doesn't have to be fast. Can I play it at a steady speed? Then move on. All right. Now our one string rock riff for the day is uh, the great hit Smoke on the Water. And we're going to do it on the sixth string. And uh, it's not originally written on the sixth string, but we're going to put it there like our other riffs. And then we're going to move it around to other strings, just like our other riffs. So Smoke on the Water on the sixth string starts out open. And third fret. And fifth fret. And you repeat that. Open. Three. Six. Five. Then open. Three, five, three, open. Let's do that again. Open, three, five, open, three, six, five, open, three, five, three, Now, for be total beginners, it's okay to slide one finger. If you do that, I would shake every finger. Second finger, then third finger. Then pinky finger. Now you've given every finger a little bit of exercise. Now let's do it with good fingering. First finger is going to be playing the third fret. Third finger, the fifth fret. Let's use pinky on the sixth fret. All right? Again, nice and slow, and we're going to gradually speed this up. Open, three, five, third finger. Open, three, six, five. Open, three, five, three, four. Again. Open, first finger, third. Fifth. Open three. Pinky six five. Open three five three. Four. And a little faster. Three five. Oh three six five. Oh three five three. Four. And again, a little faster. Review of our other riffs. We did bad to the bone. Oh, five, oh, three, oh. Oh, five, oh, three, oh. Oh, five, oh, three, oh. We did Peter Gunn. three one string riffs now after you can play that on the first on the sixth string then I want you to take it on to every string you can play all these riffs any string you don't have to change a thing you keep the fingers the same you keep the fret relationships the same 
and you can immediately play those three riffs on six different strings. What you're doing, you're playing it in five different keys, and that's the great easy thing about the guitar. You can play almost any simple riff immediately in a lot of different keys. After you've done that, you've taken it to other strings, then take the pattern, move it up the neck. It's not going to sound the same. It doesn't sound like smoke on the water anymore. That's cool. That means you can make up your own riff based on smoke on the water. Move it around, change it, change the rhythm. You can play all day long taking these patterns, moving them around the neck, change the rhythm, uh, write your own rock riff. Okay, now the, just reviewing our new technique, our new technique for the day was the roll, thumb, 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 index, middle, rank, keeping a nice hand position, thumb and index finger not running into each other, and adding index and middle with uh, improvised rhythm. Adding that to your chromatic scale, and picking a set rhythm. We picked shave and a haircut. Ba -da -da -da. Pick any rhythm you wanted. Picking a set rhythm like that and going up chromatically, real good for the independence of fingers, independence of hands. All right, that's uh, tonight's lesson. Make sure you chat in any questions. Any questions, Mr. Mike? No questions. Uh, so make sure you chat those questions in. Uh, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, Sunday Night Live practice lesson on strumhum.com. Thanks a lot.